Good morning everyone, this is Bob Martin with rcsub.com and the Nautilus Dry Docks. And this is another update on the uh, Thor Design Seawolf build that I'm currently working on. Just wanted to give you a bit of an update. Um, my cylinder is all set uh, and ready to go. Um, as you can see I've run some air lines on the top. This has the uh, Caswell, um, I believe they call it the, the Snort or SAS system. It's got a, uh, a micro air pump in here and basically uh, it allows the model to draw air in through this top nozzle, through the sail, uh, pump it into the ballast system so you're not using your gas. So um, in a model of this size it's, it's of dubious uh, value uh, because the pump is a little bit on the sl slow side but uh, it does give you pretty good control over trim so long as your uh, snort is above the surface of the water. But it is a feature uh, on this model, it's implemented, uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, you can see all my linkages have been uh, implemented. It looks like a, a bit of a mess back there, kind of like a plate of spaghetti, but uh, um, moving from left to right here, you can see that this um, far left side is my um, rudder linkage. And the next one are the forward dive planes. Uh, and those run through here uh, with brass rod all the way up uh, to the front. And as I mentioned last time, I made the dive planes integrated into the lower hull. Uh, and as such, I had to notch out the upper hull, as you can see there. Makes things a lot simpler to uh, implement. Next one over are the rear dive planes and those are connected to an ADF2 automatic pitch controller and then the last one is uh, actually my torpedo firing mechanism and uh, this actually required a, a full push-pull um, ability so what I did these are these are um, Caswell click-on connectors that come standard with all of the um, you know Dave Merriman cylinders so these are magnets that uh, touch to each other, but they're not stable. They don't uh, connect um, together in a linear fashion, a stable linear fashion. So what I did is, uh, you can see here, if I, if I move this, um, because this has to push and pull in order to depress the plungers of the torpedo launchers uh, in the front of the unit, I made this uh, brass sleeve and basically it just slides forward over both of the um, click-ons and you can see that made it a rigid uh, structure there so just a, a sort of a simple fix in that regard. Um, torpedo launchers uh, you can see right here those are the, the forward tubes there's two of them uh, on the lower hull in roughly the correct scale position for the model and that's kind of where I'm at right now. I'm going to start moving on to some more cosmetic issues and then some uh, water testing here shortly. But uh, before I do, I wanted to show you this. Uh, what I was doing is I was getting a lot of vibration in my drivetrain. And uh, that's obviously not a very good thing. The pitch controller really does not like it. Uh, if there's any vibration in the drivetrain, the pitch controller goes a little crazy. Um, but this is a Dubrow prop balancer and this is the standard white metal um, impeller that comes with the kit. Now you can see the idea behind this is if there is a heavy side to the propeller uh, it'll fall to the bottom and this kind of makes sense you can see there's a set screw hole in the top and uh, as such you've removed a lot of heavy white metal from the piece so uh, if we turn it and just let it go it settles down perfectly with the uh, set screw at the top. So solution to this, I'm going to spin this over, drill a hole on the opposite side, remove an equal amount of material, get that thing balanced up really nicely so that we eliminate as much vibration as possible, get a nice smooth drivetrain. That is where we're at. Thanks again for checking in. Uh, the next few updates should be a little bit more exciting. I'll have uh, everything painted up and hopefully have this sucker dropped in the water for you. Talk to you later.